we all need God to order our steps in His Word. God left it up to us. We would venture off just the stuff that we all not be. So we thank God for ordering our steps. We thank God for just being able to be here today. And we certainly want to praise God again for our ushers ministry, for our ushers ministry leadership over on this program, the planning committee. Uh, most of the time we have these special day recognition today. They ask uh, a guest preacher to come in. So I was surprised when Miss Peggy had came to me and she said, no, we want you to preach for us today. Amen. Glory to God. And so we thank God and we praise Him for the opportunity as always to be able to stand and to speak. I was looking up in the, in the balcony. I was looking to see if Brother Elliot Smith was here because I know he jokes me when I say this sometimes because he thinks I'm just joking when I stand and say, man, I'm tired. But I'm really, really tired. And I'm not joking. It has been a whirlwind of a week here at Park Street. As I heard me say, we preached two funerals, went to another one, the meetings all day on Wednesday. I had a class that I was in uh, Thursday from 9 to 5. I rushed home, changed, went to my daughter's first football game. We got to the game, we got ringed out. <laughs> I had to come back home and try to get ready because I had to preach Friday morning at the preaching camp that I hosted and we had here at Martin Street. And that was from Friday from 9 to 5. And then I had to leave, go pick up my wife and go straight over to the Wake Missionary Baptist Association Fellowship Banquet. We were there with Deacon Brown and I was sitting and I was eating. And I said, man, Deacon, I'm tired. I done ate this food and now I'm sleeping. Because <laughs> I'm just worn out. Saturday I had to come back from the preaching camp. Left the preaching camp, went home and changed real quick and came back for the Usher Fellowship. By the time I got home last night, I was just worn out. But I talked to my mom and she said, Well, you know you got to preach at your own church. No matter what else you do. And I woke I woke up and told my wife, I just had one more day before Sunday. I'd be all right. But it don't work that way. And so we just pray the Lord blessings and strength now as we come to preaching and teaching from his holy word. And our scripture reading today will come from the book of Psalms. If you allow, I actually want to read verses 1 through 12 into your hearing. Psalms 84, verses 1 through 12. Our usher's theme is Resting on verse 10, but we'll read 1 through 12. Those that are able, we ask that you will please stand. Just one more time for the reading of God's holy word. Then you will find these words written by David himself. It says, How amiable are thy tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My song longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still, they will be still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who's passing through the valley of Baca, make it well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. 
no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. God word for God's people. It is blessed and may it have a blessing to us all. We talk about our Father again, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this honor and privilege to be able to come into your presence and worship you in spirit as well as in truth. We thank you, Father God, for this occasion that you've allowed us to gather here today. We, we thank you for the songs of Zion that have been sung. We thank you for all the precious people that are here under the sound of my voice. And so now, Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would call down the fresh and the new on each and every one of us. And then, as always, your manservant, I pray now that you would hide me behind the cross, that only you might be seen. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to my mind and speak through these lips of flame, that I might give your word as you have given it unto me. And then, as always, Lord God, I ask for preaching power, the kind of power that makes preaching easy. Lord, I ask all these things in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in his holy and his precious name. And let the church say, Amen. 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 In honor of this occasion of being Usher's Day Church, I want to start this morning with a question. The question that I have for day today is, why would anybody want to be an Usher? <laughs> why would anybody want to be an Usher? You know, I've been in church all my life, church. And I have to admit to you that there's been a huge lie going on in the church. And I'm sure that if you've been here more than once or twice in your life, you may have heard the lie too. Because the, one of the biggest lies ever told in the church is that anybody can be a usher. Come on now, you, you join the church and you're like, I want to serve in the ministry and you can't sing. Can't join the choir. Come on, somebody. You, you don't want to teach Sunday school? They're they trying to find something to do? Well, the first thing they'll tell you, well, if you can't do nothing else, you can always be an usher. But somebody knows that the devil is a liar. And I've come to deal with the lie this morning because the truth of the matter is, everybody can't be an usher. At least everybody can't be a good usher. You see, because there's some people that wear their emotions on their sleeve. There, there's some people that don't know how to smile. There, there's some people that come to church with bad attitudes. The last thing that God needs is somebody at the doors of his church with a bad attitude. You see, because more times than not, the first person that somebody sees when they come to church is not the pastor. The first person they see is not one of the deacons, but one of the first persons that they see and they greet is an usher. And there's this greeting usher that looks like they've been sipping on lemon juice all night. One that can't smile, that can't say hello, that can't be nice. Then that person probably ain't coming back. If you're one of those ushers that, that they can't be nice, that can't smile, that, that can't say hello to people, then the last place you need to be in church is standing at the door. I mean, there's a place where you're in church, but it ain't in the usher's ministry. You see, because my years of preaching has taught me anything is that every church needs some good ushers. You see, because the God we serve, he does everything, church, decent and in order. The last thing that God needs is for people to encounter somebody that was a bad attitude before they even get in his presence. Come on, man, we gotta be honest there. That there's some people that, that they can't be at the door. Because there's some people that when they come to church, they come to church with bad intentions. Everybody that come to church don't act decent and they don't act in order. Some people don't follow orders and some people don't do what they're supposed to do. And that's why you can't have usher at the door that's mad all the time. You can't have usher at the door that's just looking to put somebody in their place. Just looking to let somebody know you can't do that. That's why everybody can be an usher. Because everybody in church 
They'll have the church inside of them. That's why everybody can't be an usher. You see, because some people can't deal with the ugly looks, the bad remarks, and the bad attitude from some of the people in the church. There's some folks that they ask you to move. You got to move because if you don't move once, they might not ask you twice. So there's, there's some people that's had a long, hard week, and they're just looking for somebody to get on their nerves. They're just looking for somebody so they can set them straight and put them in their place. And you got to be careful when you're dealing with those ushers. Come on, man. There's some ushers that, that believe in turning the other cheek, but then there's some ushers. They don't mind telling you exactly what's on their mind. They don't mind telling you where you can go and what you can do in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You're one of those folks that don't mind telling folks off. That are quick temper and don't know how to have a smile on your face. Again, the last place you need to be in church is in the usher's ministry. And so the next time somebody tells you that loud, that Anybody can be an usher. You ought to stop and tell them that everybody can be in the usher's ministry. There's some folks that tell you when they come to see you and tell you they want to be an usher, you ought to tell them, I thank you for wanting to serve the Lord, but this ain't the ministry for you. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> so again, church, when we ask ourselves the question, why would anybody want to be an usher? I believe the best place to find the answer to that question is in Psalm 84. Because Psalm 84 has been called the usher song. It's in this song that David provides the motivation for anybody who believes they want to be an usher. And each motivation David sums it up church with a blessing. Because just like there's a blessing in being a servant, there's also a blessing in being an usher. So if you're an usher, don't let somebody minimize your service to the Lord. Don't let somebody tell you that what you're doing is not as important. Don't let somebody tell you that it does not matter because it may not matter to them, but it does matter to God. You see, because God is not looking at the size of your service or the location of your service, but God looks at the faithfulness of your service. That's why I tell folks that if you are going to be an usher, Make sure you're on time. Make sure you're in the right uniform. Be where you're supposed to be. Do your job and be the kind of usher so that when you see Jesus, he'll say to you, well done. You don't have to be a preacher in order for Jesus to be pleased with your service. You don't have to ever sing a solo. You can be the kind of usher that don't ever cause no problems. And God will be just as pleased with your service. So again, for those of you that might be wondering and asking yourself, why would somebody want to be an usher? I believe that David shows all of us a few things in this text that might give us the motivation for why somebody would want to be an usher. The first thing that he teaches us is that for the ushers, they find shelter in God's house. You see, as the song that starts this song, he says, his soul longeth, his heart fainteth, and his flesh it cries out for the living God. Not only that, but it, he describes, he said, look here, God, even the sparrow and the swallows have found the place that they can call home. So if you're wondering why the psalmist would want to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, it's because in God's house, he had finally found some shelter. He had finally found a place that he could call home. And we know, church, that David was searching for this place that he could call home because in Psalm 27 he said that the one thing have I desire of the Lord that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And my friends, I don't know about anybody else but like I said, there are some weeks when I can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning because after going through the week I just know that if I can just make it to my father's house. And sometimes when I think about going to church, I want to say to somebody, come and go with me to my father's house. Why? Because there's peace, there's happiness, there's joy, there's a blessing, and there's shelter in my father's house. You see, the, the psalmist said, blessed are they that not just come 
to the house of the Lord. But he said, blessed are they that dwell or find their home in the house of God. And church, I just believe that it's a blessing because no matter what else is going on in God's house, you are always find the saints of God praising God. Why? Because in God's house, you finally can find some shelter. And I'm not talking about shelter from the weather. But somebody here knows that when it comes to God's house, you find shelter for everything that's going on in life. That's why the psalmist said, when you get here, you ought to come in with only one thing on your mind that's praising God. Because when you come to God's house, this ain't the time to be worried about how you're going to pay your bills or worrying about what the doctors are going to say or worrying about what's going to happen on the job on Monday morning. Because when you come to God's house, you ought to enter his gates for Thanksgiving and enter his course of praise. Because when you get here, he'll shelter you for the rest of your life. See, somebody knows that as long as you're in God's house, you don't have to worry about the weapons that are being formed against you. Because God has promised that as long as you're in my house, they shall not prosper. And I don't know how y'all feel about it, but it's good to know. And I'm mighty glad to have found some shelter when I get to God's house. Because not only have I found shelter, but I found safety and I found a refuge. And I found it all when I get to my father's house. So if you are in us, then you ought to be glad to be standing at the door. You ought to be glad when it's your Sunday to serve. Because when it's your time to serve, you get to come to your father's house. And God has made you a promise that your labors shall not be in vain. God will shelter you from everything that's going on in your life. But the next thing that David says, for those that are usher in God's house, he said that you will find strength in God's house. Psalmist said, blessed are they whose strength, Lord, is in thee. And he said, those that are going through the valley of Baca, he said, they'll make it well. And the reason the psalmist said that they would make it well is because he said that they'll be going from strength to strength. What the psalmist was saying is that all of us we're walking through this thing called the valley of the shadow of death. But some of us, he said, you're coming to church every Sunday, and then you leave it here going through the same old mess. And you're dealing with the same old stuff. And he said the reason that you're dealing with it is you keep on thinking that you can do it all by yourself, and you keep on thinking that you do not need the Lord on your side. But the psalmist said that the reason that he was excited to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord is because when he got to God's house, he found his strength. And he just didn't find his strength, but he said, look, as long as I'm in God's house, I keep going from strength to strength. Because as long as I'm in God's house, when I get weak, he said, then God is strong. And I'm sure that somebody here can testify that somewhere along life's road, you can say, yes, I got weak. I got tired, I felt like quitting, and I felt like throwing in the towel. But God, somehow God was able to show up, and God was able to give me the strength that I needed just to keep on going just a little bit further. You see, church, because sometimes God will allow you to go through something, not to tear you down, but God allows you to go through so he can build you up. Because sometimes God has to bend you before he can mend you, shake you before he can shake you, and break you before he can make you. But I thank God every day for the shaking and the breaking that has taken place in my life. Because I realize that God just wasn't shaking me, but he was making me and making me stronger than I ever was before. You see, somebody here knows that you never really know how strong you are until you've been through something. You never know how much you can take until God has put something on you. And no, he'll never put more on you than you can bear, but God will put a little something on you. God ain't putting it on you because he's trying to weigh you down. No, God is trying to build up your faith muscles. God is trying to make you a little bit stronger. God is trying to help you get through some stuff that's coming your way that you don't even know about. Until you've been through something, come on, you don't know that you can make it through something. So that's why you got to thank God when you're in the midst of the valley 
that you're not just in the valley, but you're going through the valley. Because going through the valley gives us the impression that sooner or later, I'm going to come out on the other side. And somebody here can testify that when I came out, I was much stronger, much wiser, and much better than I was before I ever went in. Again, somebody here can testify that it was a long night. And they can say that, yeah, we can will endure for a night. But thank God that we can no last always because joy does come in the morning. And the reason joy comes in the morning, church, is because if God allowed you to make it to another day, that means the grace that God gave you for yesterday was for yesterday. But the fact that he woke you up this morning means that God has given you some more grace and some more mercy. And the first thing you ought to do is you ought to thank God that he woke you up this morning. Even if nothing else go well in the rest of your day, the fact that you woke up this morning means this is a good day. All I can say again to the usher is the next time you're standing at the door, don't just see yourself as an usher. Don't just see yourself as a doorkeeper, but see yourself as a gate that God is swinging open to give access to his people so they might come inside and be in his presence. Because when God sends his people to the church, you don't know what they've been going through. You don't know how much it took for them to get up and make their way to God's house. And the last thing they need to encounter when they get here is a bad usher. I've been dealing with mean, nasty folks on the job all week. I don't want to deal with them at church. I've been, I've been dealing, fussing and fighting with folks all week. Now I got to fuss and fight with an usher because you want me to sit here and I want to sit there. I just want to be in God's presence. Sometimes you don't know what a smile on your face does for somebody. You don't, sometimes you don't realize what a good morning, how you doing, with God bless you, does for somebody. Because there's some people, the, the smile they get from the usher might be the only smile they're going to get today. The warm greeting they get from you might be the only warm greeting they had all week long. Because some people come to church with the expectation that I'm going to church so I can deal with what I've been going through all week. After all the stuff I've been going through this week, Lord, I'm running on zero right now. I just can make my way down to God's house. When they see that usher, that usher ought to be like, welcome. Yes. You've come to the right place this morning. Yes. You've come to the place where you can be renewed, revived, refreshed, refilled, and redeemed. Welcome to God's house. Yes. Amen. We ought to see this at the filling station. When people come here running on empty, Running on fumes. It ought to be the usher that says, Well, we've come to the right place. Well, anyway, if you run into that bad usher, you already been fussing and fighting this morning with your spouse, fussing with the kids in the back seat, then it got on your last nerve. Now somebody at the door with a bad attitude. You're like, Lord, you know what? I had good intentions of coming to church, but I'm going to go home. Before I lose my testimony this morning. But lastly, the text is tailored to teach us that for the ushers, they find security in God's house. But the psalmist goes on to say, listen, God, he's a shield. The psalmist asks God, he said, Lord, look upon my face with favor. Then he goes on to declare, what we always say, that a day in thy court, Lord, is better than a thousand. Because of that, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now, in order to understand what David is saying here, you got to remember something. David can testify that I've been in those tents of wickedness. <laughs> David can testify that what life was like in the tents of wickedness. So us in here to testify that I am always been in church. I spent one or two days and one or two nights in the tent 
That's a wickedness. What I thought I was getting, I really didn't get it. What I thought was so much fun, I found out that it wasn't fun at all. Now that I'm in God's house, I come to God's presence, I found that God will supply all of my needs. So I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. He said, let it dwell in these tents of wickedness. David was reflecting and remembering what it was like when he wasn't with the Lord. David is remembering what it was like when he was a soldier in Saul's court. While he was there, he had to watch his back. He had to sleep with one eye open. And he had to run for his own life. David was remembering what it was like to have his own son to turn on him, to try to take him out. So if anybody knew about the security that you find in God's house, David knew about it. And that's why again, in Psalm 27, he would say, In my time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion and hide me in the secrets of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? See, because David knew that as long as I'm in God's house, look, I know that everything is going to be all right. He knew that even if his mother and his father were to forsake him, that the Lord would take him up. And so all I can tell you, church, is yes, you may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but you don't have to fear no evil, and you don't have to fear nobody else. Because even when you're going through the valley, God said he'll be your rock, your sword, and your shield. And when your enemies come upon you to eat up your flesh, he will make sure that they stumble and fall. See, when you're in God's house, he'll put a hedge of protection around you. He'll fight your battles, and he'll take care of you. But not only will God take care of you, but God will have you saying that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Again, I don't know about anybody else, but it's good to know that when my enemies are after me, when, when my enemies are trying to take me out, that all I got to do is make my way down to my father's house. Oh, that sounds to me and to some of us in here. It sounds like all you got to do is make it the home base. Some of you all grew up before the time of video games and we had to play outside. <laughs> and you know that you, when all you had was room to run and folks would be chasing after you, trying to tag you. And all you had to do in order not to get tagged and not to be hit was to make it the home base. Come on, somebody. I know, I know that's a little, 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 little less sophisticated than what y'all are used to, but that's all you had to do was run around and find your way to home base because you knew that if I can ever make it to home base, I know that I'll find safety, I'll find security, and that everything is going to be all right. The enemy may be after me, but it can't get to me as long as I'm at home base. I don't know about anybody else in here, but I, I feel like there were times in my life when the enemy was touching me and I was it over and over again. Because in my life, it felt like I was dealing with one thing after another. Because if it wasn't my finances, it was my family. If it wasn't my family, it was my friends. If it wasn't my friends, it was my faith. And I just thank God that I was able to make my way to a home base. And when I get here on Sunday morning, I'm not worried about somebody trying to touch me or tag me. Why? Because God will put you in a place where your enemies can see you, but they just can't tag you. You can look at them and say, ha, 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 I made it. I know you were trying to get in here, but you won't be able to get in. I know you were trying to touch me, but you can't touch me. Why? Because God will raise you up above your enemies when they can see you. Oh, they man, they can see you, but they can't hurt you. They can't touch you. They can't tag you. As I get ready to go to my seat again, I'm going to say to all the ushers, keep standing at the door. Keep doing your job. Keep serving the Lord faithfully. Because as long as you're standing at the door, you're going to find shelter, you're going to find strength, and you're going to find security. But as I get ready to take my seat, I want to leave you with this. I should there's one more thing that David said you'll find standing at the door. Yes, you'll find shelter. Yes, you'll find strength. Yes, you'll find security. He said, but you also will find supplications. Because he said, God, the Lord will give you grace and he'll give you glory. And God will not withhold any good thing from 
from you. So again, I don't know what you're in need of this morning. I don't know what you came looking for this morning. But what I do know is you came to the right place.